Welcome to Open Your Eyes. I'm going to talk about Pentecost. The Amish call this Wit Day. It is the day the disciples got their power. Also means wiser. I can remember my grandfather used to say to me, don't you have any wits? I never knew what that meant for years. Pentecost is an agricultural festival. These are divine instructions to Israel in Exodus 5, 23, 14. Three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me. 1. Celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days. Eat bread made without yeast. As I command you, do this as appointed time in the month of Abid. Abid, which means March in early April and it's a Passover time when it's celebration at that time for in that, time, in that month you came out of Egypt celebrate the feast of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in the field Celebrate the Feast of Ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the field. Wheat and barley is always planted in the fall of the year. They get the winter snow and it helps them to grow. The barley was planted in the fall of the year and in the spring they harvest their barley. This was the first fruits. Many people were in Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the first fruits. Jesus and the disciples were there. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would come. In Acts 1 8, Jesus says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness. Jesus told his disciples, you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Are we being a witness? Are we spreading his word? Do we tell people? Or are we afraid to tell them? I had a motorcycle for 36 years we had it, me and my dad. And I used to talk to people about Jesus there. And a lot of times they would ask me for, to pray for them. I had one guy that came there for motorcycle parts all the time and we would talk about Jesus all the time. We don't have to do it just behind these walls when we go to church. We can go into the stores and talk to people. I remember one guy one time I was at Walmart and he was passing out cards about Jesus. We can tell people. There's a lot of lost people out there, really lost, if you look around. If you look on a Sunday morning at a football game, how full the stadium is, and look at how full your church is. Show them that you are a Christian, the way you live. In Acts 1-4 it says, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not 
to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Just thinking. If he was just sitting in a room waiting for something to happen, but you don't know what's going to happen, would you be thinking someone's coming to show you something? Would you be looking out the windows waiting for someone? Or how much commotion was going on in the room, chattering around about talking about what's coming? For which he said, you had heard from me, for John truly baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now, after Jesus ascended to heaven, his disciples were in Jerusalem. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pentecost, the first feast of Pentecost was celebrated 50 days after the Passover. The 50th is associated with the year Jubilee and therefore represents freedom and liberation. In Leviticus 25 10 it says, a time when the so far ram's horn would sound, and all slaves would go free, and all debts would be cancelled. Just think, your debts, the, the, all the things you owed, if you had the banks, wouldn't they go broke? <laughs> they wouldn't be getting no money back if your debts were free after that. It commenced on the 50th day, Reckon from the first day of unleavened bread on the morrow after the lamb was offered. In Leviticus 23:15-16, it says, "From at the day after the Sabbath, the day you brought the sheep of the wave offering, count seven full weeks, count off fifty days, up to the day after the seventh Sabbath." and then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. At the Passover, the Israelites were delivered from Egypt, Egyptians' bondage. At the Passover, Jesus Christ took place of the Lamb and was sacrificed for the sin of the world. When they were in the room, there was a sound of a windstorm coming from heaven. Then they looked like flames of tongues of fire appeared and set on each one. And they all got filled with the Holy Spirit and started to talk in different languages. Many Jews from all over were there for the Passover. People heard this loud sound and they could see through the windows, fire looking like. So they came running to see what was going on. And they said they speak in our language. They are from Galilee. How can they do that? Then there was one there said, they are full of new wine. Which means drunk. And it's only nine o'clock in the morning. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter told the crowd about the power they just witnessed. The amazing power of the Holy Spirit had been promised by the prophet Joel in 2, 28-32. Peter told everybody the Holy Spirit would begin to all God's people, young, old, men and women, masters, and servants, all we got to do is ask for God, means, and repent. Peter begins his sermons by quoting Joel 2, 28, 32. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons, daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. And your old men will dream dreams. And even on my servants, both men and women, I will show wonders in all the heavens 
above and signs on the earth below. Blood and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. I can remember my mother, my grandfather said back, I can't remember what year, it was 68, 69 or something like that, when a man landed on the moon. They said when man, when he landed on the moon, they stepped on the moon, it would turn into blood. Man, there was a lot of people watching it that day just to see if that really happened. And it didn't. Nothing really happened. It didn't turn into blood. But that's what a lot of people thought it was going to do. And back, when we go back to where it says visions and dreams. Visions means a, a young person. They can look at like a big field out there and, and see a mall being built there. Where homes be built in there. Where an old man dreams about things like that that but never happened. He never did any of those things. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And on that day, 3,000 became members, which means they were saved. Peter, the first disciple to recognize the truth about Jesus in Matthew 16, 13 through 20. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But what do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjonova, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bind in heaven, and whatever you loved on earth will lose in heaven. Peter also was the first to bear witness of him. Peter preached his sermon to men of Judea who had judged the whole episode as being the effect of too much wine. God had promised that the world be a time when all these who followed him would receive his spirit. And not just prophets, kings and priests. Peter pointed out that the time had come to pass. God would speak to and through all those who would come to him, whether in vision, dreams, or prophecy. This was the beginning of the last days. God's final act of salvation began with the pouring out of his spirit. This final act of deliverance will continue to the end of age. Job prophesied that the spirit would come. Jesus fulfilled that promise when he sent the spirit in John 14, 16. It says, And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. If Jesus wasn't dead, he could not have sent the Spirit, therefore, he must be alive. He lives. And if he didn't live, he wouldn't have to send the Spirit. He wouldn't be able to. So we know he lives because it tells us right here in this Bible. And if you read that Bible, you know that he's alive. A lot of people says he's not. A lot of people don't believe it. But I believe it. Jesus is both our master 
and our Savior. And Judeans asked what they should do. And Peter said, repent. Repentance. For the Judeans involved rejecting their former attitudes and opinions concerning who Jesus was. In faith they had accept him for who he declared himself to be. When he was on the earth, do we accept him when we repent? Did we change the way we live? Do we still do the things that God forbids? Are we pretending to live the life that God wants us to live? What are we doing? As Christians, we want people to know that we are Christians. As the way we live, by what we do, by what we watch on TV, where we go, and what we do. On that day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out onto the disciples. The Holy Spirit can be poured out on us. The Holy Spirit has been with me in my whole life. From the time I was in the army, I can remember the close calls I had and with being drunk and drugs and wild women and much more, I won't say, but he tugged at me all my life and he brought me back. And that's why I'm here today. Why, I don't know, he kept me on for all my life, kept me going. I struggled back and forth all the time. But he had a reason for me. And I do what he tells me and I go where he tells me to go. If we believe and live the life that Jesus wants us to live, have you changed your life in the way of the Lord? Did you give up the things you love to do? Or are you still doing them? If you are repentance didn't mean anything to you, in Romans 10, 13, it says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And all we got to do is call out to him. Ask for the forgiveness, and you will be forgiven. In Acts 5, 30, it says, The God of our Father raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. They didn't believe in him. So they crucified him. God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And also is the Holy Spirit. When God has given to those who obey him, are we obeying? Stop and think, do we need to repent? How is the time, and there is no other play, better place than in front of the church. Remember, Jesus said, He is coming back, and all eyes will see Him. Are you ready for Him? Can you give up the things so you can follow Him? Don't be too late to make up your mind. Receive the Holy Spirit. Having the Holy Spirit will give you us the power to get through hard times. And we need to help each one of us to stay on the path of the love, joy, and faith. And study the scriptures together. Repent of your sins. Let Jesus Christ into your heart today. If you have never read the Bible before... It's not really that big of a book. You can look. And this is a large print Bible. Start reading with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then you will know what it, who Jesus was and why he was here. Then after you're done reading them, Find a good church to go into that believes in the Bible 
and then start reading the rest of the Bible. You need fellowship with other Christians and stop doing the other things you, that God forbids. Now, if anybody out there needs any prayers, I'm going to pray now for you. Dear Father Heaven, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that you send down upon us, Lord. Lord, give the ones out there that needs this power, Lord. And Lord, if anybody needs any healing or sick or anything problems they have, heal them in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, guide them throughout these days, Lord, and lead us in the right path, Lord. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.